Okay, thank you, thank you, Yeshi. And thank you everyone for being here once again in Dharma. Liberating your mind, or at least stepping into the liberation of mind. Wherever you are with that, I'm wishing you the best. Yeah. That's a wonderful, wonderful mission. So with the Mo Sangha is here, I already mentioned that uh, combining loving kindness practices with your awareness practice is very beneficial because it helps open you up a little bit and also serves as a, well, sometimes as an awareness holder, you may notice when you're self-grasping and it does feel confined. And so altruism reminds us of something very natural, just loving each other again. When we're children, I think we just play in that love often. Right? When we have the chance, right? Children that have the chance. If a child has a chance, I believe that they will be naturally kind and playful. And so maybe we can access our natural kindness and playfulness. You can smile to yourself a little bit today. Is there any resistance to that smile? If so, it's a great chance to release. So the way of abiding is really all about that. It's releasing these things that keep us from smiling, that keep our body from smiling, our life from smiling. Okay, it looks like we're starting on my favorite line. <laughs> or one of my favorite lines anyway. Chains of gold and ropes are equally binding. <clears throat> that means you can stir it in either direction. Good or bad karma is equally binding. We can think that we're the bestest person and we can be chained by that. I'm the, the moral high ground. I'm the class leader. I'm the alpha. I'm the nicest Buddhist and most humble you could imagine. These are all chains that are equally binding. <laughs> yes, it can seem funny, but also tragic. <laughs> Look at these golden ropes, <clears throat> excuse me, these golden chains that are binding our presidents, our world leaders. They're binding uh, people who have all these uh, resources, all this money, they get bound by that money, don't they? And we, oftentimes, if we're not wealthy or something, we don't sympathize, but I encourage you to be radical and 
understand that uh, these beings are also suffering. It's really hard to escape some sorrow without suffering. Okay, so just a little um, reminder in terms of terms. The heart essence is synonymous with awareness. Everything that this text is talking about is about your awareness. Not about your thoughts about awareness. It's not about your apprehension of awareness. You making it yours. Uh, it's talking about the true nature of your mind. Okay. So it says, from the consummate and ultimate perspective of the definitive heart essence, chains of gold and ropes are equally binding. Likewise, the spiritual and non-spiritual bind the mind equally. Yeah, haven't we seen that? I mean, people really get into their spirituality and they have all this uh, dreadlocks and, and all these robes and <clears throat> many, many necklaces and bracelets and toe rings. And, yeah, but then they're literally bound by that. <laughs> At that point, so many necklaces, you know. And so many beliefs, spiritual beliefs religious beliefs that we even in the hippie world turned into extremists it's very easy actually when you talk about socio-political circumstances for a person on the left or the right to be radicalized <clears throat> because our mind just wants to get fanatic a lot of times we can get fanatical about collecting turtles okay about wearing fuzzy furry costumes and collecting toys we can get fanatical about anything it doesn't have to be violence or drugs but if you really look at the socio-psychology there our minds tend to gravitate towards fanaticism whether I mean culture definitely helps condition that because we have these cults of personality in fact the propaganda machines and political machines they depend on your uh, inclination towards the cult of personality fanaticism wrapped around that people want to follow somebody and so then they have all these Britney Spears and Justin Bieber pictures all over their wall or, or Muji or Osho or Dai Lama fanaticism right. we, we can chill out you know we can chill our mind out a little bit and realize that you are the God you are the Buddha you are worthy of veneration <laughs> so we become narcissists <laughs> that's also a fanaticism it can lean that way too doesn't it so just something to keep, uh, uh, we don't keep an eye out, but we know that about our mind, that it can kind of get obsessive. And many times uh, we have these short spurts where we get really into something and then a couple weeks later we're gone. And it's fine. 
uh, I would I wouldn't like to really live like that because the inconsistency of it and you kind of do people wrong like that like hey I'll be your friend for two weeks I'll give you all this friendship but then I'm going to be gone in two weeks once I get bored of you. And people have treated this group like that. They've treated me like that in our sangha. Like it's some shiny toy. And then when they find out we're not so shiny, that it actually takes authentic kind of introspection to do this, then uh, they get turned off, understandably so. My cat is the same thing. She, she doesn't like to play with stuff if it's not shiny, if it's not looking like a little uh, snake or something, you know. Then she just don't want to play with it. So anyway, I'm just kind of preaching, uh, I suppose. But that, that line right there is just... Psh, Spiritual and non-spiritual bind the mind equally. One sentence. Nine words. Very auspicious. <laughs> Number nine. <laughs> I could just sit there and stare at it. Like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Look at all the temples. Look at all the churches. How bound people get. Even by the Dharma. So awareness really uh, gives you a leg up, okay? It gives you this huge opportunity to be free of even the trickiest attempts at bondage. All right, I suppose I'll move on now. <laughs> So just as light and dark clouds are equally obstructing positive and negative actions, equally obscure awareness. <laughs> Another one. It's just a good stanza. <laughs> ah, positive and negative actions, equally obscure awareness. Wow. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's why we don't we don't need to wear all these clothes. And, you know, sometimes I put this robe on even, and I'm like, oh man, but just the connotations of it. But for me, these are very kind of magical. Okay, yeah, I'll say that word magical. These were all gifted to me in in one circumstance or another. And it may end up being like that for you. You may like to wear a robe when you meditate or when you go sit outside and rest in peace. Now, while you're still alive, okay? You don't have to die to rest in peace. <laughs> Why don't they say that, by the way, to people that are alive? Rest in peace, my friend. <laughs> so... Yeah, but the robe can serve as a kind of protection and uh, just make you feel like, oh, feel like meditating. And, if you know, it's a personal thing. But, man, some of these Nakba outfits out there and the earrings and the, I mean, it's just another phase at that point. Yeah, so be careful doing it. I would advise that if you find yourself being one of these folks that do things like, for two weeks and then quit try to keep it consistent there's so much harm in that to yourself and others it's it just ends up being a phase <laughs> and that's immature right so i'll continue reading just uh, i hope everyone also on youtube really lets that sink in for a moment Upvotes and downvotes, equally obscure awareness. <laughs> okay. Therefore, it is crucial that one immersed in genuine being 
who has realized this to be so, transcend all causes and effects, whether positive or negative. Yeah, so there's a caveat here, a prerequisite almost, we can say, for one who's immersed in genuine being, you can go beyond positive and negative. But if you have no recognition of awareness, then you can't do this. You'll turn hedonistic, you'll turn careless. Your conceptual mind will screw everything up, thinking, oh man, I don't need to worry about kindness because uh, everything's, everything's kuntazampo. Everything's all good. I don't need to do kindness practices. Yeah, so that's why in my lineage, uh, in my tradition, we just do all the practices. Even if you're totally enlightened, you just still do the practice <laughs> just in case, you know. And it's wonderful to do the loving kindness by all this breath meditation and everything. But really, unless you have the awareness, you cannot really embrace the full scope of this point, okay? And that's why in the Zen tradition and even in early Buddhism, there were so many divides because they said, uh, this is beyond positive and negative, whereas part of the Dharma was all about positive karma, developing positive karma and virtue, right? So there's an obvious contradiction there. And without awareness, you would not know it, that it makes sense. It, it's, it perfectly makes sense, this, this paradox. Yeah. Uh, and uh, by the way, the tantric sex practices are the same. If you actually read uh, the tantras and the sutras, you would understand that it takes so much maturity to do these tantric sex practices. And you have to have all kinds of, you have to have mastered the bodhisattva yana essentially, which means your compassion is very, very strong. Your wisdom is very, very strong. Then you do the tantric sex. I mean, anybody could do them. Yeah, sure. But the ones we're talking about in the scripture that deal with awareness, those require a high level of maturity in the practice. Because when you're in union with your partner or <laughs> your hand, <laughs> uh, it basically, the, there's a bliss there uh, and there's a point there, especially um, in the culmination of, uh, during that... Um, orgasm that uh, this is where you can experience a total oneness no a total free of conditioned self actually surprisingly enough and then if you can manage to retain your uh, sexual fluids then this is also um, a big benefit to yourself and could be to your partner too all right Uh, and, and there's a lot of tension relief that can be found there, too. <clears throat> so, naturally occurring timeless awareness arises from within the mind. The dark night of causality is cleared away. And the massing clouds of virtue and harm do not amount to anything whatsoever. The sun of ultimate reality shines in the sky of the basic space of phenomena. This is the decisive experience in the ultimate sense. The definitive conclusion is reached by virtue of the ineffable nature of the ten attributes. This is superior to all spiritual approaches based on either causes or results. Non-manifest meditative absorption is beyond the range of meditation. The self-knowing awareness as such, free of elaboration, is the decisive experience of the complete resolution of phenomena. So there we also have an important uh, kind of information is that as you rest in your self-knowing awareness, phenomenon, appearances, will resolve. Okay? 
<laughs> Very next line. Oh, that's one of my favorite lines. What what page is that? 22 of the source verses. I, I remembered it in the commentary, but I didn't remember it. Yeah, this must be page 22. Which is my birthday. So I can remember that. Yeah, uh, well, I suppose I should read my favorite line. <laughs> one of my favorites. That's why this these treasuries are just my Bible. They're, they're really awesome because of so many back-to-back one-liners, you know, one-hitters. <laughs> Phenomenon are resolved in it. Moreover, finds its resolution in phenomena. See, I was just about to quote that, too, when I was talking about the previous line. So resting in awareness, phenomenon are resolved in it. Moreover, awareness finds its resolution in phenomenon. Because pheno how can I explain that? Well, phenomenon is the very thing that you're attracted to, that you're conceptualizing and objectifying and fixating on and getting lost in. So when your mind starts to free up from that preoccupation with phenomenon, then phenomenon also reveal themselves to be mind. But just like in a dream, let's say you had a dream that you were in the desert, Death Valley maybe, and you're very, very thirsty, and there was a, a glass of water there. Well, you may drink it and feel satisfied, or you may realize that that glass of water is your mind, and feeling satisfied is your mind. And so, if all of a sudden you realize this whole desert is my mind, and so is this thirst, and so is this water. Yeah, just seeing the multi-dimensionality of your mind, I'm sorry to say, I just don't hear that being talked about. In fact, I'm pretty sure our group is one of the first places where I've heard it discussed multi-dimensionality and, and if you could look into modern science about it I'd be probably very interested because um, but if they don't even have a, a working definition for consciousness I doubt they're going into the multiplicity of, of dreams or the uh, multi-dimensionality of dreams but if you ever do find anything on that that is frontline science as far as I'm concerned, okay? <laughs> so since this decisive experience has nothing to do with whether or not there is such resolution, it is decidedly beyond characterization and expression in terms of existence and non-existence. There is no specific reference point but rather a supremely spacious and panoramic state. Panoramic. <laughs> Phenomenon are resolved. Ordinary consciousness transcended. How joyful is one immersed in genuine being. This very state. Immersion in genuine being. In the past, present, and future is the single basic space of enlightened intent, the uninterrupted nature of phenomenon. Ooh, enlightened being would have fit so nice right there, but okay. Masters of awareness share a dimension of experience equal to that of all victorious ones. Uh, if I could read that line ten times to you, I would. Masters of awareness, which you all are, or if you, wait, please, uh, if you're not, then I encourage you to get on board. It's very, very simple. It's about trust and recognition, and you can recognize this awareness for yourself. Why would this whole book be talking about awareness like this if it was just some mundane, oh, I'm aware of the sky, yes, I'm aware of my hand, yes. No, it's not like that. It is that simple awareness. When you say, I'm aware of my hand, but now take the hand and the I'm out of that. And it's just awareness. Okay? 
so it is that simple like Niguma says uh naropa's sister naropa's older sister said that it's so simple you cannot even many will not see it so uh masters of awareness which i really starting to consider many of you like that awareness holders masters of awareness at least you you've recognized awareness some of you are at the beginning still and it won't be long before you become awareness holder a master of awareness and that just means that it's starting to be there in your day-to-day -day experience very prominent you're no longer <clears throat> bound by your thought world in the sense world so anyway this says right here if you're an awareness holder you're equal to the buddha and i, and I really encourage you all to come into your buddhahood in an honest compassionate way free of the conditioned ego it's possible in a very short time actually you can be totally free so <laughs> i sound like i'm selling this for only 1999 <laughs> you can be free <laughs> in 30 days or less money back guaranteed <laughs> except here there's no money <laughs> there's only dog lures we run off love love is our currency i don't have a problem with that love and friendship same thing so the non-composite expands unchanging and indivisible the expanse of naturally occurring timeless awareness beyond effort and achievement the expanse in which all phenomena are mere names beyond imagination and expression within this holy positive realm in which nothing need be done regardless of what manifests there's still holy positive basic space in the basic space of samantabhadra apparent phenomenon and emptiness are not better or worse when the ineffable is taken as existent labeling occurs out of confusion yet even while there is labeling there is no confusion or its opposite so please keep that in mind you tender-hearted practitioners out there uh, like me who get very sensitive about the the happenings of this world the middle way means we can be sensitive we can be empathetic and compassionate but make sure you know that this is built from your labeling make sure you remember that you're labeling and confining the ineffable you're, you're constraining it to your concepts you're confining it to your labels and so once you know that there's relief there for a tender-hearted person for a compassionate person there's relief because right now there are many things we can't do anything about it. there's hundreds of thousands of young people dying in wars um, if not millions at this point if you're a, a sentient being that affects you that that can bother you yeah and so you can say well it's ineffable it's all kuntazampo it's all good it's all love but beings are confused and that's why they're in it beings are dealing with karma that's why they're in it it's not their fault maybe they're even being birthed into wisdom to these things but our duty to stay powerful to stay strong and confident is to have compassion for things we can't do anything about rest in our compassion for that but still realize that it's ineffable and that it's based off of labels that come from self and other and then when we're always doing that we also never see how this is a reflection of my mind i really challenge humanity what if we all stop thinking about war would war still happen or what if just us in this group stop thinking of war you see would that make an impact would it create peace i think so i think our thoughts are that powerful
Okay, so... Yet even while there is labeling, there's no confusion or its opposite. One comes to a decisive experience of phenomenon being completely unnameable. This is the way of abiding that is natural great perfection. Thus, concerning the phenomenon of the world of appearances and possibilities, whether of samsara or nirvana, with the decision that there is no question of there being confusion or not, nirvana is not something to be achieved by renouncing samsara. With the decision that there is no question of things being born or not, one transcends objects conceived of as being born or ceasing, as existent or not. Okay, I think we can... Oh, wait, no, let's finish this section. With the decision that there is no question of whether there is purity or impurity, there is equilibrium. Nothing better or worse no acceptance or rejection. One has come to a decisive experience of all phenomenon within a wholly positive expanse. From the precious treasury of the way of abiding, this is the first topic reaching the definitive conclusion concerning the utter inexpressibility of all phenomena. All right, so it looks like we got through ineffability then. That was the, the first topic of ineffability or inexpressibility. All right. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here with me for that reading. And if you were able to stay through the whole thing, that's very good because really, although we've lost a lot of formalities, that this is considered a reading transmission so staying the extra five minutes to hear the end uh, depending how, how into it you are uh, can be can be good you can say you got the reading transmission uh for one <laughs> and um for two it has a lot of powerful dharma in here okay but many people cannot uh, be around for the reading transmission. That's just part of it, too. Right. 